All right, yeah, so this is automatic update, sort of an initiative um, update, but in the context of the newly announced Starshot. So um, for follow-up, uh, go to the um, automatic updates project page. I'll mention this a few times. And at the very top for a couple of weeks or so, um, there'll be a link to a Starshot automatic updates webinar follow-up issue, which will have issues that, um, that you can work on if you're interested and other links. But um, I will mention that again. Uh, so in the context of Starshot, um, you know, recipes is a really big thing in Starshot, basically the ability to have pre have modules installed and have them uh, have some pre-configured configuration for them all in the browser. Um, so if a recipe is installed and a recipe does not have, uh, if, if you're, all the modules aren't present, then you're going to need to uh, install them via Composer. Um, so we're trying to bring new people in and we don't want them to automatically have to jump to Composer if they're not uh, comfortable with it. So that is part of the automatic updates initiative is sort of a Composer API, which I'll get into. Um, and we want people, you know, with low code capabilities and um, especially that can be challenging, Drupal can be challenging for newcomers. And a lot of, um, a lot of people find Composer challenging. Uh, people find uh, keeping their Drupal sites up to date uh, challenging. So that's sort of where the automatic updates initiative jumps in for Starshot. Um, so it keeps Drupal 4. Uh, somebody's not muted. Um, it keeps your Drupal core secure um, and ensures uh, new users don't need Composer expertise. And it provides a Composer API as part of the initiative for project browser and other future modules. Um, and it's gonna provide the ability for Starshot to apply new recipes that include new modules on your site. Um, so a lot of competitors already have this. WordPress has auto had automatic updates for years, I think since maybe 3.7. Um, of course, if you're using software as a service, um, you don't have to think about updates. And so we wanna provide this and we also wanna provide a security level above our competitors. Um, so this is an example of, I was just installing WordPress locally, installed a couple modules. I have the ability to update uh, WordPress itself. And then for the plugins that I have installed, I also can update these. Um, so why do we need automatic updates in general? Uh, we want to keep Drupal sites can secure and make Composer less painless, as painless as possible. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of Drupal sites are slow to update Drupal core. If we look here, um, this was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, these are all releases that are more than five months old. And you can see they have a pretty fair amount of usage um, compared to the total usage for Drupal 10 sites. Now, uh, there have been a couple of security releases that people haven't updated to, but the last two security releases that I that I checked on you have to have a particular module enabled. Uh, so like I think Comet and JSON API. So it doesn't mean that all these sites are insecure. It may be that they're not using those particular modules that have the security um, issues against them. But historically, uh, when we've had cr even critical security um, releases, uh, sites have been very slow to update. So an example, I think in 2018, um, is the fastest we've had it update when there was a critical issue and 50% of site owners updated within four weeks. But unfortunately, the vulnerability was exploited within two weeks. Um, so we really want people to update, especially for the critical um, updates fast. Um, and people aren't doing it now as I mean, some some people are. It's, we can't say that all of these sites that are reporting that they're not updated, that the site owners didn't patch the sites, but it's an indication that there are at least a significant number of site owners running uh, Drupal versions of Drupal core that have known compromises. Um, so the goal of the automatic updates initiative sort of outside of Starshot has been to have a secure user interface for automatically updating Drupal core and its modules and allow 
also with the composer dependencies without breaking the live site. And so that's a little bit tricky, you know, running composer operations on a live site, you're going to be updating your code base. So obviously we want to make sure that as much as we can, we try to protect against it actually, um, you know, corrupting your code. All right, so we're going to jump to a demo. I'm going to switch sharing to a file. Use the new. And okay. Can people see a yes, yeah. indeed. Drupal, Drupal core screen? Okay. Let me make this a little bit bigger for myself. Okay. So I'm just going to sort of talk over this. I can see this. it, but on my end, it's a bit blurry. I don't know if it's for blurry for others. It might be my my uh, end. Yeah, it is. It is to me blurry. Too. Yeah, will be better. Okay, hopefully it will. Uh, will get better. Yeah. yeah. There's not okay. any. I don't know if there's any adjustments on my part I can make. Um. Okay, we're going to zoom into parts of it. So hopefully that will help. Okay, so this is when you install the module, you have a page to update Drupal core. In our case, we have a, a chance here to update the minor release, uh, patch release, or these two minors uh, to the next one or the next uh, RC for three. We're going to do 2.7, which is a minor update. Um, so in this update, in this demo, I'm going to sort of like go fast through some things that might not be super fast uh, because of network connections and stuff like that. So just if you try this and it's not quite as fast for yourself um, as the demo, sorry. Um, okay, so we downloaded the updates. It made a copy of your code base in a temporary location, and now it's gonna run the composer operations on that. Uh, let me pause right here for a second. So. Once it's ready to update, it can expect, inspect the code and figure out some things about it. In this case, because we're doing a minor update, it knows that if you apply this update, then there are core modules that are going to need database updates. Um, if there's other things that either uh, won't allow you to update, we'll show the message here, or if there's other warnings that we want you to know before you update, we're going to display them here. An example here would be maybe you were doing an update and you didn't think about the database updates and you're not actually ready to do them now, then you could uh, pause and come back later when it's a better time to run these database updates. All right, so we're going to go forward. We're going to put the site into maintenance mode, which is the default, because we don't want people hitting the site um, while we're updating. We'll continue on. Uh, so now it is copying the temporary code base where it ran the composer operation back over to your live site. And in this case, it'll automatically send you to the database update screen, which is a regular part of core to see all the updates, to run them. Um, and then we'll look again to make sure that we actually have updated core. And Drupal core is updated to 2.7. Yay, the latest in our minor, so we're safe. But now we look and there's a, some installed modules and they are not up to date. So we're going to update uh, these modules. We have a sub module called automatic updates extensions. So we'll click that and we'll get a list of all of the modules that need to be updated, and we'll select them all. And then it goes through a similar process here, where it again copies your code base to a temporary folder, and then applies the composer operations there. And we're going to get some status reports. So in this case, it's going to tell us a few things like the actual projects that are being updated. It also gives you a very strong warning that, you know, contrib modules, because we don't know right now, uh, you know, what, let me back that up one sec. Right, not backing up. <laughs> Sorry. 
Okay. So we give a very strong warning that contrib modules could break your site for updates. Drupal core is much more careful. These modules maybe be a bad example of something that could break your site, but um, you know, there's thousands of contrib modules, so we don't really know. The module doesn't know how risky any particular update is. So we ask people to update the contrib modules if they can um, on another environment. And then again, we ask uh, that the site be put into maintenance mode, which is the default. And then we're going to hit continue in one second. And we have to acknowledge the warning about the contrib modules. Uh, we copy the code base back over. And behind the scenes, this uses rsync. And so we apply it. And in this case, because there were no database updates, we should just go to the available update screens. And we scroll down to see that now everything is up to date. Yay. OK, I'm going to go back to my slides. Very cool. No command so, line was used. Yeah. So okay. these so these are legit composer operations. We're not um, doing any, um, you know, just, you know, we're not downloading zips. And well, composer may be downloading zips, but we are not. We're not actually downloading the zips. We're asking composer to do the composer operations. And one thing that's nice about that is after you say you use automatic updates and then you want to do some operations of Composer via the command line, you're fine because we didn't do any shenanigans. You can sort of uninstall automatic updates completely and it's just a regular Composer project. Um, we also offer um, unattended updates for Drupal core for minor and patch releases. Um, right now, there are not updates uh, unattended updates for modules and themes, you have to use the form for that. But that may be something that's on the roadmap for Starshot. We'll have to, we'll I'll talk later about like, you know, that those decisions haven't been made yet exactly. Um, so let's sort of talk about the ecosystem now. So on the bottom here, we have two API only modules, Composer, Stager, and Package Manager. And then on top of that, we have automatic updates, which updates core, automatic updates extensions, which is modules and themes, and then project browser, which installs modules and recipes. And then in the future, hopefully we'll have other, basically anything you could think of that might be helpful from a composer perspective, we could add other modules on top of that. Um, so let's look at composer stager first. Um, this is a separate PHP library. It's not a Drupal module. This is what deals directly with Composer and handles finding uh, executables like Composer and rsync, and it performs the operations in a staged copy of your code base. Um, and this allows validating the operations and contrib modules can have access to, uh, using the Drupal event system to basically say, okay, has anything happened in this operation that I don't want to happen to my live site? Um, and then you can stop the operation if you if basically there's something that that you don't want to allow. And we perform a lot of checks um, during that, but intra modules can add even more. All right, so let's look at package manager. So this is a Drupal module. You could think of it as Drupal's Composer API module, um, and it it adds a lot of sort of like common checks that anything that uses it basically doesn't have to think about. For instance, it ensures that any modules that are installed are secure and supported. Um, and it performs common checks like disk space, make sure your environment supports uh, the operations, make sure that there are no conflicting composer operations. Like say you left an update for days and then you did other composer operations while that was happening. We don't allow that. And then we check for things that would Basically, when we do this staged operation of Composer, we obviously don't want it to affect anything in your live site because you haven't actually decided to actually apply it to your live site. So one thing that it checks for is hard links in your code base that go out of the hard links from inside your code base that go out of your code base. So those would actually, if you ran a Composer operation, those would affect things, say, on your server um, 
that you might not intend to accept when you really want to update your live code base. So the idea here is that automatic updates itself doesn't have to worry about all of these things. And then also project browser and any other future modules don't have to worry about all these sort of basics of running these composer operations and updating your live site. All right, so let's look at project browser. Um, it uses package manager to install modules and their dependencies. So once um, in the future, when package manager is in Drupal core, this will be a totally separate module. For development purposes, package manager is in the automatic updates repo now. Um, so recipes may have module dependencies that need to be installed. Uh, again, package manager will make sure that all of your modules are secure and supported. Um, so one example is you may, your recipe may install a particular module and that module version may be uh, secure and supported, but it may install a dependency that maybe just has had a security release. So we have to make sure that all the dependencies of the modules, uh, all the Drupal dependencies are secure and supported. Um, and also, so it package manager allows that the recipes can be applied to the live site, basically with that checking in the staged area to make sure nothing has gone wrong before I apply it to your live code base. Um, so I talked earlier that we want to be more secure than our competitors. Um, so that's why we're implementing the update framework. And this is something the Drupal Association is doing on drupal.org. Um, and it's the live endpoint should be out, I think, by the end of June. And this is a general framework for up securing software updates. So it's used, say, in updating car software, any anything you could think of. Um, it's It could be used for, and it's sort of used by a lot of big projects now as a cloud native computing foundation project. Um, and so we on the client side have written a couple modules that basically integrate and make sure that all of your composer operations are secured by this. Um, so this would include all of your command line operations and the operations via the package manager API. Um, and it can validate uh, packages within the Drupal ecosystem, composer packages, so core modules, themes, and composer plugins. Um, it doesn't validate the complete vendor ecosystem of PHP because we don't really, you know, any particular site could have thousands and thousands of different, uh, you know, PHP packages to choose from. So the Drupal.org uh, endpoint is in progress. We have a staging environment now, and which we've been testing about, and I'll mention an issue later about uh, for helping us test it. And then they will also be testing the live endpoint. So let's look at the current status. So we have a contrib module that has a stable release. We've had stable releases, I think, for like a year and a half or so. Um, and for the last year or so, we've had no user reported bugs, which is, you know, which is what you want in an updater. Um, so we've had a sort of steady usage of about 300 sites and it's been slowly creeping up upward, but it's been sort of staying steady, which is a good sign and that people aren't just, you know, trying it and it doing something horrible to their site and then going away. Um, so we think it's yeah we think it's a really good sign that basically people have it installed and nobody's complaining about it but you know we want to encourage people to complain if there are problems but as of yet for the last year and a half we haven't had any actual user reports um we had a security review that was funded by the drupal association and done by a security firm called cura 53 um, and there's also been a security review of the Drupal.org side of the update framework. Um, we found minor edge case security handling issues that were decided could be just um, declared publicly because they are sort of more hardening than uh, actual security issues. So there's a meta issue to address, I think, five of those. Um, and yeah, we're working on those, but it's not something that we thought, oh, no, we you know the module can't be used. It's just sort of making it better. Um, we have two core merge requests, uh, one for the package manager module and one for the automatic updates module. These both are in you know needs review status. 
um, they both are converted automatically from the contrib module to uh, to the merge request. So there's not a divergence. There's a divergence because we needed to change some namespaces, but the code is pretty much the same. So that's one of the reasons we really want testers is because the people testing the contrib module are testing pretty much the exact code that we hope to be in core someday. Um, another milestone for the update framework. Uh, so Drupal.org endpoint should be ready by the end of June, like I said. And on the client side, we're sort of ready to flip the switch. We already have the composer plugins that we need in the module integration. It's just right now we basically have turned it off because there's not an endpoint on the other side to check. Um, we need performance testing. Basically, once we get the live endpoint, we want to see it with sort of real Drupal sites with you know tons of contributed modules. Um, next stop. Uh, so for Starshot, basically what we need to do is any changes needed for package managers to support recipes. So we wrote package manager to be a sort of a general composer API. Um, but of course, now that we have this new usage of recipes, we may need changes. Um, and we're finding a couple edge cases that we're addressing already. Um, and then we need to determine what the MVP for Starshot is. So project leadership was just announced for Starshot. So that is, you know, I'm sure they have a lot of things to do. So uh, this is one of many things that they need to do. Um, is it already feature complete for 1.0.0? Like my opinion, yes, you know, we could add it now and I think it would be good as far as the automatic update part, the recipe part is getting done. But as far as securing Drupal core and providing updates for modules, I think, I think we're good. But of course, you know, it's, we'll have to figure that out. That's, you know, the leadership was just announced. So that's something that, that hopefully we'll get some consensus on. Um, and then we'll need automated updates configured in some sort of basic recipe I'm imagining. Um, so what initial config uh, will be installed with that recipe or set up with the recipe? Should cron updates be on by default or should users have to choose to turn it on? Um, the next milestones for core, so core issues need to be reviewed. Um, like I said, the core merge requests are current with the contrib module. They're automatically converted. Um, I have some issues in the follow-up issue as, for, as far as cleaning up that conversion script, because um, it's something that's sort of a throwaway. We won't need it after it's in core, but we do kind of use it a lot. So I could use some improvements. Um, I mentioned earlier the composer stager and our tough related composer PHP libraries. So that we have core issues for reviewing those libraries, even though they won't be added to core directly, but they'll be added as dependencies. All right, so how can you help? Um, so again, after this webinar, this would be the place to go. You go to uh, drupal.org project slash automatic updates, and they'll be at the top, there'll be this follow-up issue. Just click that and go through some links. And I, you know, I have issues there. I may add stuff based on the questions that we get at the end of the webinar. Um, use the modules. Um, so one thing, you know, because the core merge request is automatically converted from the contrib module, it's re we really want to get as many people uh, using it as possible. Um, you know, different com automatic updates is sort of different from and sort of package manager is different from a lot of projects because it's really dependent on your on your system. Um, you know, a lot of things like maybe say web form is not so dependent on how your your web server is set up and permissions and stuff like that. So a lot of Drupal modules, you know, if they work on one site, they're probably going to work on another site. Um, automatic updates and, and dealing with Composer and you know updating your code base live, that's a bit different. Like I said, we haven't had user. Uh, reporting that it's been a problem, but the more use cases we get, I think the better. Um, so use automatic updates and we have an automatic updates um, usage form to report like, hey, it went great or hey, it crashed or whatever. We want people to file issues, but if you're just sort of trying it out quickly and you want to tell us, you know, it worked great and here's the system I was on, we really appreciate that. Uh, Project Browser obviously uses our API. So we're... Um, interested in people using that. I'll show a screenshot of what you have to do to turn on the module installs. Um, and then once the recipes plus project browser integration 
is completed, we really want testers for that. Um, so this is in Project Browser. Right now, I want to file an issue to remove this saying it's experimental um, because I think that was added sort of when Package Manager was very experimental. And now that Package Manager is in a stable module, I think, you know, installing via Composer, via the UI, uh, shouldn't be considered experimental. Right now, when you install a uh, Project Browser, if you want to install a module, it'll give you instructions for how to install it via Composer. But once you, uh, if you install the automatic updates module and check this, then um, you'll be able to actually install the modules without going to the command line at all. Um, so again, the more users, the better, because the Composer projects being different, local environments being different, and basically, you know, identifying user needs. Um, you know, everybody who looks at it is maybe will have a different idea of what an updater should be. Maybe you've used the WordPress updater and it's been great. And then you use ours and you're like, wow, the WordPress updater has this feature that y'all don't have. So we want to sort of know about those kind of things. And then providing, you know, it just provides more, the more users, the more confidence we have for Starshot and core inclusion. Um, so as I said, the tough integration on Drupal.org is getting pretty close. Um, there's an issue linked in the follow-up issue that's basically how you can create a Drupal project that will test this integration. Right now, it tests against the staging data, but uh, soon it will test against the live data. So any enough people um, would be great to test this. Um, contribute to the modules. I'll show the follow-up link in a second. Um, uh, yeah, I'll wait for a second when I've, I'll show the actual issues. And then we have the tough libraries, which are on GitHub. Um, could use performance enhancements, test expansion, uh, could use UI design help. Um, sort of right now, it's a very basic Drupal form. We'd love feedback on this. Um, and then I've created recently something called the Automatic Updates Extra Module. So basically, the Automatic Updates Module itself is really focused on what's going to be in core in, as an MVP and what's going to be in Starshot as an MVP. But there may be a lot of things that are sort of related, but aren't on the, you know, 1.0 roadmap. And this is a module to sort of try out different ideas. Um, one question I get asked a lot when I do these presentations is Git integration. And that's something that's being worked on in this, working on integrations say, with backup and migrate. And Drush itself has a backup functionality. So working on backups for right before an update and then right after. Um, and the other thing that's really helpful if people want to work on this is it really gets people, you know, testing out using our API, you know, seeing is our API clear? Could there be improvements? Is our API documentation, could that be better? So um, that's also linked in the follow-up issue. Um, so let me go. I'm going to just show a couple of the issues. This. You see the follow-up issue? Um, yes. Drupal.org issue. Okay, great. That's it's uh, really amazing, actually. But keep going. Okay. Yeah. So this will be, we have a roadmap uh, for core, but for temporary, for people who are here, I'm going to leave this up for a couple weeks. Uh, we have the core merge requests, which um, could you use reviews? It's a little difficult um, to, you can review the code, but you can't actually install, you can't actually check out the merge request and update Drupal core because of the nature of like, we put restrictions and automatic updates that you can't update from a Git clone because we have no idea if that's safe, what you're, what you're at. Like I said, the contrib modules themselves are sort of an exact conversion. So if you test the, the contrib versions for actually updating core, you're basically testing the core merge requests. Um, we have a couple issues to follow up um, from initial um, reviews examples like removing changes uh, for dictionary.txt, which generally we don't, uh, I was told, try not to do. Basically, we'll add those words later um, and then clean up the conversion script and then some standards issues that we've been flagged on in the initial reviews. And then we have a, a bunch of things with the contrib module itself. Um, so an example is we intended package manager to only be used this first one here for composer operations, meaning we copy a stage of your 
um, code base and you run composer operations and then we apply that back to your site. But um, people have mentioned like, oh, could I do other things in that stage that aren't related to composer? And we really want to document that that's not, I mean, we can't stop somebody from writing code that would do that, but we want to really document that the, that's not the intention of this module is to provide a general sandbox where you can do random things to your site. Um, it's really composer focused. Um, another example is um, we exclude the files, your files from the temporary stage of your site. So when we copy the code base over, obviously a lot of times your files directory might be in your project, but we don't actually want to copy that to the temporary directory because that could be huge. And there was a new um, file stream or, or this, I forget, a stream that starts with assets that was introduced in Drupal core that we haven't handled yet that we need to, I'm not sure if it's just an 11, but we need to handle that case. Um, and then we link to the documentation. Basically the documentation was written for the 8.2x version. Um, and we need to sort of check, I'd like people, if, if anybody's interested to sort of install the module and run through an update and then look at the documentation and sort of sort of help to fix what's outdated. Um, we have the package manager API module, which is package manager is the main thing that actually provides an API for composer operations. Automatic updates itself will use package manager API. So if you want to write a, a module that tailors the automatic updates experience, you really are going to be using the package manager API and the event system. So this is sort of the gateway for developers. So especially if you were say working on one of the automatic update extras module, you would look at this file and you'd be like, oh, I know how to develop against package manager. Um, so we want people to try it out and say, well, yeah, this is super clear or it's not clear. One thing that we're currently uh, trying to think about is we call the place that we copy your code base to a stage, but then we also have the verb to stage the code base. So it's, we think that could be improved. Sandbox, we're not really sure, but we want, pe we want people to get feedback on this uh, file. And basically our API in general is the wording, could the wording be better? Um, so again, if you want to try out the API, the automatic updates extension module is there. Um, yeah, to mention that. And then this is the issue for testing the staging metadata. So let me escape out of there and go back to my slide, hopefully. Nope. Uh, go back to the slides. Okay. So I'm gonna help I mention that. Okay, yeah. So again, start here at the follow-up issue, which is at the top of the project page. Um uh, get in touch. We have auto, auto updates in Drupal Slack. We have initiative meeting every other Tuesday. Come by, say hi, uh, can at me, say, you know, I want to get involved X, Y, or Z way. Um, let us know if you have questions about the module or using the module or where this is going in the future. Um, and that is it. So I think we have time for questions. Great. Thank you, Ted. That was that yep. was excellent. I love I Thank love you. love love this like issue that you created for the webinar. It's very helpful. Very a lot of um, specificity, I think, for people to get yeah. involved. So uh, yeah, maybe before a, we yeah, go ahead. I said it's a it's a big uh, it's a big initiative, you know, which which under is the plumbing for a lot of other stuff. So it's it's trying yeah. to like make it sort of easy to jump in on specific things. Yeah. Exactly. And that's very helpful, I think, for people that want to get involved. They can say they don't know how. <laughs> um, just go to the issue and find your way. Um, I will say, like, before we jump into q and like, it might be useful for me to say, like, um, every few years I do this large kind of product management or product survey where we ask people in the community, what feature do you want the most? And um, last time I did that, um, automatic updates was the number one feature. It's a survey that goes out to a lot of people and usually hundreds or over a thousand people fill out the survey and we use the input or the answers of the survey to help prioritize what we work on. And, and that was 
that was that, you know, number one feature request a few years ago, automatic update. So very exciting to see it's close to the finish line. Famous last words, uh, but it feels really close now. Yep. Um, no, it really a bunch. Does. Yeah, it really does. Um, there's a bunch of questions um, in the Q&A. There was a question in chat as well, which maybe I'll start with because it's a fun one. Uh, and a question, I think it was, was it JP or JK? I forgot it now. Uh, but essentially, a person asks, uh, can the um, automatic update module update itself automatically? It can. Uh, it can. Um, right. We <laughs> uh, basically have sort of been very careful to, there's things that happen after the update, and we actually make uh another request to the server. So we we try to not to get in, we've done as much as possible to not get in a situation where you're running PHP code after you've mm -hmm. updated uh, your PHP code. And some classes may be pre-update, depending if they were auto-loaded or not, and some may be post-update. So uh, we ran into that problem early where we had a minor release and something very low level, I think a database driver was updated and it crashed the updates. And that was, you know, a year and a half ago or so, maybe uh, maybe two years ago. And since then, we've been sort of very careful about uh, as soon as we update the code, we start a new request to do any post operations. So it should be able to, I've updated it itself. I mean, that is something we'd love more people to test, but yeah, it, it should be able to update itself. Yeah. Awesome. That's a bit of a meta question, right? Yeah. Um... All right, maybe Gabor and I will tag team on these uh, Q and A questions. But uh, the first one was from Nick, and Nick asks, "What happens with patches, and especially if a patch would fail?" Yeah, so we we do. So some composer plugins, we say, "Well, we can't support them because we don't know what they do." But mm -hmm. the composer patches plugin, composer plugin, we do support. And um, right now, we set it to where um there's a setting in that in that uh composer plugin that says if a patch fails like don't proceed and mm -hmm. so one of the advantages of us running the composer operation in the staged environment is that we're not running the composer operation on your live site and the patch failed and we're like oh my gosh your site's half updated mm -hmm. so um right now we don't say handle like finding a new patch for you um I think that might be something for the automatic updates uh, extras module at, at this point to be like, we saw this patch failed and the issue number seems to imply that it's from this issue, you know, try to find a new patch. Mm -hmm. um, but we do allow that and we do, you know, if your patches succeed, obviously, then we can go forward. If not, then we would display the error that it didn't succeed for now. But it... Again, it would not have not succeeded on your live site. It would have not succeeded in a staged area and your live site is fine. Well, it's on the previous version of Drupal that you're trying to update from, but it is not hosed. Good. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that, that leads into the next question from Dallas Ramzan is, given that competitors have had automatic updates for some time, what makes our automatic updates stand out from a marketing perspective besides superior security, which I think is still a good selling point? What other yeah. key differentiators should we highlight? And I guess patch patches support is one. Patch support is one. Um, I mean, I think our integration with Composer makes our, our updater a bit different. Um, I know, I think WordPress's Composer is not our WordPress's updater is not Composer aware, so I'm not sure what you do if you use Composer with WordPress. Um, but um, I think the fact that we have it in the staged operation too, as far as I know, WordPress is actually just copies the files directly to your live site. So if something goes wrong there, you're you're half updated. Um, so I think the staged aspect of it uh, is, and I think you know just the fact it's sort of a. a better than our competitors in the sense that a lot of a lot of php cms's haven't fully adopted composer um at least at least initially when we were talking with some of the other ones about um the composer stager module and tough uh, the update framework integration they were looking at using it without composer so i think 
the dependencies between modules as you're updating them are clearly stated um, in code, whereas I think in other systems they might you might not have as much um, ways to detect conflicts. Um, so that's one of the ones. But yeah, I, I, I think, do think I we think... need to in the future, you know, differentiate ourselves in that stuff that we can look look at. I think translating some of those um, deeper architectural decisions into better marketing language is something that we could probably use a little bit of help on. Definitely. But, uh, you know, being able to say, hey, it's secure in the same way that that uh, that automated updates for self-driving cars are secured, that it's um, that it automates the composer operations without preventing you from being able to use that dependency management in the future that it um yeah and then the scale of the amount of things that it can affect like one of the other unique things about it right is that it has that shared architecture that enables the project browser uh installation functionality and some of those other things so those are those are a few of the the high level stuff maybe still too technical dallas but i think i think we can no, that's so awesome thank you thank you yeah i do think it's quite a bit better than competitors and uh, yeah, it will be an honest to help explain that to the world. Um, but like, just to add a little bit more color to it, Ted and uh, Tim said, like, modern software development has really moved towards a more composable approach where, you know, you, you rely on other libraries, you know, other third party libraries to build your code. And like Composer really helps kind of manage those dependencies. Like you could create a Drupal module that depends on three or four different third-party libraries, be it a JavaScript library or another PHP library, you name it. And Composer is really built to manage all of that. And so that is now all part of the automatic updates um, project. And like you go from there and like things like version control um, like with Composer, you can specify specific versions for dependencies and all of these things. All of that is actually working under the hood of this project. Like uh, it's been a while since I tried uh, WordPress, but I think their implementation is much more like sort of FTP oriented, where they FTP code to your site versus use Composer to update a copy of your code on a staging um environment um so i think it will be more reliable uh more advanced and more secure um so so here's a question leading on to potential next benefit is how do you leverage automatic updates to streamline a general developer workflow like you're using local to update the code base then run drush up db then config export then push the code to a git repo and then deploy to a server like how does automatic updates fit into this process? And yeah, do... so in that case, sort of what we've solved now is if you wanted to run the updates locally, we've sort of taken the composer part away from you. We haven't solved the the other steps in that. Um, we well, we do send you to the update database, so we do send you there. Um, the um, the version control problem. Um, we're sort of tackling now and the automatic updates extras module. So we could definitely uh, want feedback on how people sort of expect that to work. Um, and the next question I think is also about like, if you have a urgent update in live and it's under version control, like what do you do? Um, right now, you know, one solution is if you sort of have more, if you're using version control, but you also want to run um, the updates in live. I, the other thing I didn't men mention, we have a, a Symfony script, a Symfony console script that you basically can run on, on a cron tab on your server and it will just check for updates periodically then update your site. Um, it is not going to handle um, the version control without you know the work that's coming up in the automatic updates extras module. So a, a workflow that I've talked to people about is basically you're you would use it for emergencies. You don't want to be up on Wednesday night waiting for security updates. You'd be temporarily sort of out of sync with your um, uh, with your version control. But then, say on Friday or whenever you have time, a couple of days after the update, 
then you can run the update sort of in your regular workflow and then push it up to production. Um, but obviously, um, yeah, we have not solved the whole problem there, but oftentimes another, maybe it's. Oh, I'm sorry, Ted. I was going to say another possibility yeah. is that what you do is you have it, some version of automatic updates running, not in your actual sort of dev or stage environments, passing a, a validation pipeline, a CI pipeline to show green so that you know, uh, and maybe even automatically creating the merge request for you so that like it's gone live sometime, uh, the automatic update has installed it in the pre-production environment and you've just got a one button push, it's already been validated. Yeah. So that'd be the other, so, the other attitude towards it that you could take. Yeah, so potentially our, you know, our console command that we've sort of set up to run automatically in your production server could be part of your CI that you, you know, you run it, you run the job every once in a while, you run the automatic update script. Say if your composer JSON has not changed, that indicates there was not an update, or if you didn't get an error, then that, you know, indicates there was not an update. If you, if it has been updated, then you would, you know, do the rest of your CI pipeline and notify somebody. All right, I think that may have covered like three more questions, I guess, but we can try. So do you think that you covered the uh, urgent upgrade on live? So you basically get out of sync when you yeah. upgrade on live and then you keep uh, get in sync later. Uh, there's uh, one question from Florian on there at a hosting company. They have multiple pipelines with different staging environments. And given that they do not perform any actions on the live environment, how can this module benefit their workflow? I think the creation of the MRs and pushing that out potentially yeah. and the extras module is an answer. And then I think also if you're uh, if you're a user that's maybe very comfortable in your hosting environment and you can sort of through the UI make staged environments, um, but if you know it could potentially use the script that that maybe has write access where the web server doesn't have write access to run updates periodically. Um, if if like a development server can be uh, spun up that does have write access, then you could just use the form to run updates and then commit that as you would, as if you would use Composer, but this maybe be, will sort of save you from using Composer directly. And as we make Package Manager more advanced, uh, can sort of handle composer edge cases that you that you might have to be a quote unquote composer expert to handle that we can program that into the module hopefully in the future. Nice. Are there other practices or features of this module that can help improve that workflow in a safe and efficient manner? Um the hosting. Yeah, I guess this to... workflow with multiple staging. Yeah. I'm not sure besides what I've already covered. I think, yeah, I wish I had, I'm sorry I didn't mention the um, the console command in the, the main part of the module. Um, the idea there is like, you may not want your web server to have write access to your code base. Um, so that's why we have the um, script that can be run as a different server user and can run, um, can run updates. So that could be used in, in environments that aren't writable, but are writable by a server user. All right. Here's another question that uh, from somebody that was running, uh, was at a, also at, at a hosting company and they offered Drupal 7 automatic updates that the hosting company provided on their own uh, service. And they ran into issues even two years ago with running in that service. And they are asking if the automatic updates will be a lot more, uh, like they, they will work better because it's standardized now on, they're saying Symphony 6, but I, I think it's more because it's standardized on the Composer. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of generic Composer operation. So I can't speak for the particular hosting problems, but, um, we tried to sort of make it as standard as possible. We don't handle Drupal 7 at all. Uh, there is a module out there for Drupal 7, but it's not composer aware. Um, so sort of first iteration of automatic updates, but I think it's still supported. I'm not actually sure. Um, yeah, me, me neither, but it's it seems to go talk about compatibility of modules. Maybe composer would help with that, right? I don't know. If yeah, I mean, 
Like we uh, one thing that uh, right now it would you know because in the stage environment it would pull in the right versions of modules based on the composer requirements. Obviously, if there's no combination that can fulfill your updates, if you're updating uh, you know a set of modules, it would tell you that. Um, one thing I would like to add in the future is the ability to say you select 50 modules and you you do the update through the form um, and it, it can't fill it because of some composer conflicts. If we could automatically say, hey, well, you tried to update 50 modules, we can't, but we can update your security updates for a particular, for these modules or, hey, we ran computations in the background and we figured out that we can update, say, 40 of your 50 modules without any composer conflicts. So I think that's sort of stuff that we can do automatically now that we have an API that is harder to do from the command line to sort of filter, you know, you would like to update 50 modules, but for some reason, you know, maybe five of them are have security issues that we can't allow you to install, but we can install, you know, we can save you the trouble with those other 45 modules. So I think it sort of points to things we could do now that we have an API and a, U, a UI around it. There was a question from Chris, but well, it might be hard to answer. <laughs> the uh, question so the was command... where the commands you showed are they in the documentation? And maybe you remember what commands you showed, but. Uh, maybe we're talking about the tough integration or the that's tough the, testing. That's the same bug you found. And there's a Slack thread for, uh, there's some work on the, uh, not PHP tough, but the, the other uh, client library to not do that. Yeah, so I think, yeah, the, the issue that I did mention in the, if I, if I put it in the slide, then it's in the follow-up issue. So I think this is tough related and there is a link to the GitHub issue for that with the commands. All right, uh, thank you. So uh, Chris and Paul, created an issue for testing Project Browser on different hosting providers. Uh, and this is really something that needs to be done for automatic updates as well. They run on the same package manager infrastructure, right? Um, so maybe this should be moved up on the Starshot project. Are things we should keep in mind for testing automatic updates itself? Yeah. Um, honestly, like for the most part, if you're testing project browser on different hostings and you're actually doing the installs, which I wasn't sure, Kristen, if if um, if this issue was actually enabling the installs because by default project browser doesn't, and you have to click that. So that might be something that we want to add to this issue. If that's the intention, is to make sure that people know to go through and enable the package manager um, uh, integration, or we could. Uh, uh, have it on by default. But if you test project browser for the installs of module, you're really testing a lot of our API all automatically. Um, we did have some testing on previous Drupal cons uh, for, for testing on different environments for automatic updates. And so not a lot has changed as far as like the basic check requirements since then. So we have done that. Um, a couple of Drupal cons, but definitely we could do it again, because like I said, I don't think a lot of the base stuff has changed, but it's always good to, to get more testing. Great. Um, question from Darren. Is it, uh, is there still an option to run updates manually from the, um, from the Drupal UI? Um, so the forms that I showed, I think, yeah, I guess I'm not sure on the question. Um, we have core and contrib updates. The, the update module functionality that's currently in core that all would allow you to use the old way of updating, we do take that away if you install automatic updates because it would conflict with the current, with uh, basically it's, it would be very complex to have some composer and some non-composer managed updates. So I think with the new extensions module for automatic updates extensions, we pretty much replaced all the functionality that the update module did provide, but then with, an, with a composer aware way. Um, we do handle some cases. We do have some checks for if you have some modules installed not via composer, we don't stop you from using it, 
but we make sure that if you say update a module and composer doesn't know about it and then you're in your staged environment now you have two versions of that module one that composer knows about and one that doesn't we will flag that during the staged update i mean it's kind of an edge case but if you're sort of halfway using composer halfway not it is something that could happen um but yeah every yeah we have i guess i would say the thing that we don't have that's not the ui is the module and theme updates we don't have unattended cron updates for that yet we it's not technically hard to add it but it's a matter i think also of like starshot um decisions like do we want to include something like that in starshot because if you update 30 modules in the middle of the night and nobody's looking at your site yeah i guess that's a product decision whether that's okay or not <laughs> so maybe maybe you tell me if this is right or wrong ted but there's sort of like yep three levels i don't know if that's maybe it's an oversimplification but there is an mm -hmm. using composer manually from the command line mm -hmm. then there is basically doing updates through the module through the drupal mm -hmm. ui but still manual you click yeah you, you have to click to actually do the update yeah as we saw in the video and then there is the option to automate it with a cron um, yeah a cron option so you you have the spectrum to choose from command yeah. line manual manual in a, in the drupal ui and sort of hands off using yeah. cron yeah so the hands off way we actually have a couple ways to do that one you can set it up like just security updates or all patch updates right now we don't support minor updates um in the hands off way because that's really something you should look at if you're updating drupal core for a minor release you should you should be looking at your site when you're doing that um and then there was maybe that was all i had to say about that oh well yeah then there's we it works now with automated uh what is the version of cron that comes with drupal core automated cron it now works with that it actually fires our script in the background so we're um sort of handles a lot of timeout issues as that we're actually spawning a new ish a new process to run the updates it'll run with like system if you hit system dash cron um and then so basically any any way that you trigger cron we can we can run the updates or if you say i don't want drupal cron to run it i'm going to set up a server tab that runs the command that we provide we can do updates that way too great yeah so like the automatic updates name i think is too limiting because you, like, you also provide package installation yeah. on the ui you also provide yeah. updates manual updates on the ui so it's like yeah. a UI installer that can also automatically update stuff, by the way. Yeah. It's UI installer. Um, so uh, B Martinez asks, uh, can updates be rolled back? So can trib updates, yeah. Drupal core updates, once you apply them to the live site, cannot be live, cannot be rolled back because they can run database updates and then you're not necessarily safe to run in the previous version of a contrib or um or core. Um, so that is sort of a problem outside of the scope of that would need changes actually to Drupal itself to make that safe. Um, uh, you, I mean, in a sense, you can roll them back in this. It's a little more rollbackness than, say, running a composer operation directly on your live site, because one thing that could happen if you update a contrib module is, say, you know, five dependent modules that have could also be updated. So uh, if you ran that composer operation live in your site, then they're all updated. Sorry if you didn't want them all updated. Um, through the UI that we provide, you can say, well, I want to update this module, and then it'll download it, run the composer operation. Then it tells you like, hey, you wanted to update module X, but also module A, B, C, and D were also updated. And at that point, you can say, well, I'm not ready to do that. And then you know you can put a pause on that as if you couldn't do that if you're running composer operations directly or maybe you're saying okay a b c d and fine is fine to update so i'm going to apply that to my live site so there's not a rollback once it's on the live site but you do have sort of a chance to review the composer operation in the ui uh before you actually apply it great uh next question is what do automatic updates have to do with recipes? Yeah, so the automatic updates module itself right now controls the contains the package manager module, which again I said is a composer API one. Um, that's used directly 
with uh, recipes will project browser when it installs recipes will use package manager to say, okay, you ask, you know, you have a recipe that needs 10 modules, you have five of them already installed, but it needs five more. So package manager would go and install those modules so the recipe could work. I mean, I guess the other way that automatic updates itself has to do with recipes is if we have an installer in Starshow, that's great. And you can select this blog feature and this calendar recipe and apply it to your site and you're great. But then if we leave you like, okay, and by the way, we provided a UI to install all of those things, but you're totally on your own for keeping them up to date. Um, so that in, in that sense, because it will uh, make updating the modules easier, it kind of makes using recipes easier because you don't have to immediately, as soon as you use the recipe UI, have to jump back to Composer. Um, but I guess in a sense, it provides the plumbing, but also keeps them secure in the sense that the modules will be kept secure. All right, Jim Birch asks, is there a way to use automatic updates tools in continuous integration environments? Yeah, so the Symfony console command I mentioned earlier, you could you could have that run when you spin up a, a, CI, a periodic CI job to see if there was an update. Um, it doesn't obviously take all of your CI tasks, but it would take the task of like, I want to know, I want to either apply a security update or I want to apply all patched updates. And so it'd be a sort of simplified way to maybe not have to run, not have to do your own composer commands in there. Because if you, yeah, if you did a composer command, composer doesn't really have a concept of, um, uh, I mean, right now composer doesn't, have all of the information that our update XML has as far as if a particular um, some, a release is supported or not. Um, so automatic update integrates with that sort of extra information that's useful for determining if you want a module in your site. All right, so somebody asks uh, so they they were using a service on one of the hosting providers and it was possible to this they they're asking if it will be possible to step back and do the updates one by one if something would go wrong that there's the service that they used to use there was a possibility to go back and look at the git commits of what it will update and then one by one get, remove them if there was uh, some of them yeah. were break the site so that's not in the scope of the initial version i mean i'm sort of interested in now that we have a way for people to write uh to basically write modules that run composer operations in a safe way and you not have to worry about all of the things that we have already had to worry about you know what the contribute ecosystem hopefully will build upon this because i you know you look at a module like webform historically you know, web form is great, but uh, there's been an ecosystem around the module and sort of sort of I hope for these kind of like more advanced use cases and things that maybe aren't going to be slated for the initial versions of um, of automatic updates within Starshot or uh, or Drupal core that we provide that we start to build an ecosystem. Um, so some of that could be done in automatic updates extra, but also if you are, if you want to build a module um, that is independent of that, that uses our API, you know, come to the Slack, let us know your idea. If you're having problems using our API, you know, you could file issues on the automatic updates module to say, like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to use package manager, but I'm hitting X, Y, and Z roadblock. We want to know about that. Um, so yeah, for their more advanced use cases that may live in hopefully in a larger ecosystem of sort of composer, make composer not so hard kind of things. Mm -hmm. Maybe a related question from Sam, which is, yep. is there a dry run option either in the UI or on the command line? Because that can help um, predict if something could go wrong. Yeah, right now there isn't. Um, right now there's, through the UI, you have the dry run in the sense that you have the staged environment that is sort of like a dry run not we don't apply it to your live site so the ui provides a dry run right now we tell you some information about what happened in the environment so in the sense that the ui does provide a dry run um 
the command line right now does not provide a dry run run as far as like what it would update to. Um, but that wouldn't be super hard either to say like, you know, run the update, make the stage, but don't actually apply it. Should be something what, that we could do if there was interest in that. Um, I wonder if you could, could you still use a regular composer dry run on the command line? Because composer has a dry run option. Yeah, uh, I mean, you could, you wouldn't be taking advantage of our stuff, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we could pass that on to, to, um, we could pass, make an option in our command line tool to basically pass on the dry run option and sort of stop mm -hmm. at that point. Don't go further. Right. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, um, are there any plans to include making a backup between going maintenance mode and actually making the updates? Um, back, like a backup of your site? Backup I think so. Your... Yeah. 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 I think so. Um, so, if, if something does go wrong, it can roll back yeah. to the backup, right? Yeah. So, right now, we sort of tell you, please make a backup in the automatic updates module. There are two issues. One that started that has the integration with backup and migrate. It's not finished, but that's, um, it turned out not to be that hard, basically like trigger a backup, say right before you run the update, maybe right after, so you know where you're at. And somebody proposed a new issue, I guess Drush has a command that also sort of makes a single file backup of your site that should be pretty easy for us to trigger um, in the same kind of way, maybe right before or right after your site, right after your site is updated. But right now, that's not in the main module. Yeah, I think the remaining one question is basically ties into that is sometimes you don't know if it's a mess until the end. So mm -hmm. I think the backup would help with that. And yeah. also, if you run it on the dev environment and then push yeah. it out with all of the infrastructure that we talked about, that's possible to write around this with automatic updates extras. That yeah. Would... yeah, if uh, you are. You know, if your hosting has a backup, you know, you potentially run that. That's why we give you a, a warning before actually applying the update. Um, but for the cron updates there right now, there is not an option to trigger that. Um, there is an event system. Um, so it's kind of easy to write a module. I mean, easy. I say like the, obviously the package manager API.php file, we want people to sort of understand the event system. We think it's pretty easy to follow, but we'd love to have people that are interested in sort of writing modules that would perform specific backups to use that and give us feedback to say like, okay, it worked or, you know, it worked, but it could have been a lot easier if you explained this better, or if you added this feature to the event system. There's one plug I think I want to give to Larry Ascolas. I think he has this idea to have a phone home feature in automatic updates and to provide basically a, a green-red feedback on whether updating to a certain version of a country project or core failed or didn't fail, to phone home to Drupal.org, and then Drupal.org oh. would have like a green or red marker on the release, whether it's safe to update it, update to it or not. And that could be fed into later automatic update runs. Yeah. As like long as you're not giving out my home phone number. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But that's Our like a far out. All Ted. <laughs> that's a far out concept that could be possible to yeah, have definitely. a server yeah. side service that tracks the success rate of updates. Um, yeah, yeah. And that would help inform, like even like even more, even uh, even nicer feature set for this automatic update system than yeah. others. I think one thing I think would be possible in the near term is you know there's. I think the stuff that you've done with uh, Gabor, the update module is, you know, we can run now PHP stan stuff to, to see if your code base has certain problems. So we can run that potentially in the stage to say, hey, like this module you updated said it was compatible with the version of Drupal core that you're at. But when we expect the code, it's actually referencing stuff that's not there anymore. So we can add sort of more checks than like actual just what they declare as composer dependency since we have a whole version of your code base that we can do sanity checks on yeah, yeah i think once we get this in the hands of the masses <laughs> yeah. let's say and, and ship it i think we'll see an ecosystem of extensions and uh tweaks and you know those kinds of things bloom i think 
Um, yep. Lots of great ideas, you know, of how we can make it better, more robust. Mm -hmm. But uh, trying to get a first version shipping with yep. every version of Drupal first. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, well, lots of great questions. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, hopefully we can um, finish the work and get it committed and shipped as part of not only Starship, but also Drupal Core. So I think this is a wrap. I don't see any more new questions, but this was fantastic, Ted. Thanks for spending uh, over an hour answering yeah. questions and thank you for the hours of prep that went into creating yeah. the issues as well. Uh, very yeah. much appreciate it. Hopefully some of you feel inspired to contribute. I really hope some of you will jump in and, and start contributing, whether it's to documentation, testing, uh, writing some of these, uh, implementing some of these great ideas as uh, add-on modules or whatever it is, we would love more help. I'm sure Ted would love more help. Yeah. And uh, this is a great way to, to get involved with Starshot. Thanks for coming, everybody. And thanks for the questions and feedback. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.